What's up? How are you guys? Today we are talking about parasites, more specifically the idea of some type of big bad worm swimming around in your stomach, eating all the food, making you sick. And uh, there's a lot of fear mongering around that in a sense that parasites are not nearly as common as you would think. You know, there's so many cleanses, protocols like parasite supplements people are selling online, posting weird pictures of their bowel movements thinking they have parasites, which will generally not survive in a healthy functioning person. You know, usually they're sick or unhealthy or immunocompromised in the first place in order for the parasite to be able to survive the human digestive system. I mean, yeah, in some cases you will have severe weight loss, extreme hunger, nausea, diarrhea, deficiencies, but those symptoms can actually be identical to candida overgrowth, a fungal infection, which are far more common and more likely and just as dangerous, if not more dangerous to your health. You know, extreme cases of SIBO, CIFO will have people thinking that they have a parasite infection. And then if you think about, okay, what did I eat? What did I do? You know, am I traveling in a new country? It's very, very unlikely that you actually have a parasite. And you can't really blame people for self-diagnosing this stuff because a lot of the time doctors don't know how to fix digestive issues. So, you know, you look at your bowel movement, you see some weird stuff, you think you have a parasite, whether it looks like, you know, eggs or segments of a worm, might not actually be the case. You know, it can be easily tested by submitting a stool sample to a lab. You know, just go to your doctor, say you ate something weird, you're having stomach issues, you know, ask him if you can get tested for a parasite and you're probably not gonna have it, which then <laughs> makes you worry because you still have digestive issues and it's not a parasite. Now these protocols, these parasite cleanses, big problem is that the elements that are in those can make the bowel movements reminiscent of a parasite. You know, candida itself, the fungus, sometimes looks like strings, which someone might think is a worm, but they have candida. You know, doing extreme antimicrobials can strip the gut lining and you'll have strands of mucus, parts of your intestinal lining, which looks similar to a worm. I mean, I guess a little bit. Anything involving seeds or pills like capsules can easily look like eggs. So it's much easier to say that you, know, you have digestive issues as opposed to looking at your poop and thinking you have a parasite. You know, I see people eating like papaya and pumpkin seeds and then saying that they're you know, pooping out like the eggs from the... Well, it's just, you know, it's, there's a lot of stuff that, that can be very deceptive and you know, there's a lot of profit that comes from that fear mongering to get people to do this stuff. Not to say that you might not have a parasite, but it's definitely, definitely, definitely overstated. Now, there is an idea that parasites can be kind of like an end stage of disease where the body is so weak that they're just taking hold and actually trying to help, seemingly. So it might start with food intolerances. You start trying to follow these diets and fix the problem. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Then you end up with the fungal infection, the SIBO, the CIFO, the digestive issues, and then, you know, that can suck nutrition from your body. Things can get worse and worse. The fungal infection can take hold. And then you have this really bad dysbiosis. The organs aren't functioning. There's like no acidity. There's no digestive capability. So then if you do consume something that has any type of parasite, it's going to be very easy for it to replicate and then take hold in your digestive system. But in reality, you know, those parasites are eating the food you're eating and then the waste that the parasites are excreting is actually nutrition for your body. So it's not always or necessarily a bad thing. You know, that being said, there are some unnatural amounts of parasites occurring in certain food sources. You know, I mean, sometimes in extreme, extreme concentrations. And since most people aren't healthy, it can be pretty easy from parasites to be introduced from modern food sources. So I made a list of the nine most common parasites and we're gonna kinda go over them, where they're from, if you should be concerned at all. Starting with Entamoeba histolytica, which is from ice cream, fruit, typically packaged conventional products. And a lot of these parasites, almost half of them, more than half of them, 
are from fecal matter, which is more of an issue in third world countries and just food pollution, you know, if the water source is contaminated, uh, including this one. It can replicate in the digestive system and migrate to other tissues in the body, sometimes asymptomatic, and in some cases, uh, liver abscesses can be formed. And I mean, in like really, really crazy cases in immunocompromised patients, they say it can cause some type of hemorrhaging and liver failure. But, you know, when you look up cases of this, you know, there's not really that many reported, there's not case studies. So most people, when they get it, again, asymptomatic will probably just get a little sick for um, some period of time, again, from, you know, polluted food sources. You know, it's not like it naturally occurs in a food that you have to avoid. Then we have Anisakis, which is probably the most common parasite that you'll see on social media as, you know, it's a roundworm you'll see in fish all the time. And honestly, most fish have this, you know, I've uh, caught up a lot of fish myself and I think almost like every large salmon or monk fish has had these in the flesh. You know, it's why they freeze fish before you consume them, especially the sushi. And they're so small that they can't really penetrate the human intestines. So if you did eat a lot of these, you know, they're going to like get stuck, die, and then your body might have an immune response from that. But uh, usually people eat these and they just kind of go through the digestive system or the worms are already dead. So it's not really something that you should be worried about. I mean, if you're eating a lot of raw fish by yourself, then, you know, that's at your discretion. Next up is Ascaris lumbrosoides, and it's from vegetables. Again, the polluted water issue. So, you know, we're getting animal-based fertilizers, manure that's contaminated, and that's being put on the vegetables, and then it's being sent to the grocery store and people eat it. Asymptomatic, just like the first one. And I'm gonna repeat this over and over again. Immunocompromised, sick, unhealthy people, maybe there's a chance they get a large amount of this in some type of vegetable and it makes them sick, but not something to really be worried about. Up next, we have Cryptosporidium. Again, it's a pollution issue. A lot of the time it's from chicken and you know, sometimes the chickens are eating very low quality water. Who knows, some type of sewage might have gotten in the water source. Um, you know, it can take hold and replicate in the digestive tract, uh, but it is commonly asymptomatic. And, and that's the theme, guys, you know, we said it earlier, healthy people, generally parasites are not able to take hold. Then we have Cyclospora caetanasis, which is sometimes found in fruits, imported usually, and it can cause traveler's diarrhea, although this is really, really rare. Uh, same as the other stuff, it's from polluted fruits and vegetables, which is from the manure, and you know, sometimes sick farm animals can have a lot of parasites, so there's so many different things that might be in there. Next up, we have Diphilobothrium, which is probably what people are envisioning in their head when you talk about the parasite. This is from larger fish, especially salmon. It's a segmented tapeworm, and I guess you might get it if you ate you know, the flesh and it had the eggs in there, which are kind of like cysts. Um, this can grow very large. You know, Hypothetically, it would take over your digestive system, start causing vitamin deficiencies, um, you know, laying millions and millions of eggs. I mean, this, these can get like 20, 30 feet long. So they can basically halt your entire digestion and consume everything themselves. That being said, it's so rare. There's an average of one case recorded per year out of the millions and millions and millions of people. Um, and the, the most common places for this are like Korea where you know maybe they're drinking a lot and eating raw fish so the alcohol inhibits their liver and then you know the digestive system doesn't break down the eggs or whatever and even when people got it it was like a really quick treatment of like an anti-parasite and it was uh, basically gone fasciola hepatica more commonly known as the liver fluke which is again from contaminated vegetables specifically lettuce you know they use the manure from the animals that might have had the liver flukes and then you end up eating it yourself, where it can penetrate the gut, migrate to the bile duct where the flukes mature, and then they go to the liver, and on the liver they can cause hemorrhaging and liver damage. I'm actually curious if um, these are like a, a natural protective organism where 
Uh, you know, if the animal has liver damage or maybe they've been eating too much of like a very astringent grass or something that the liver fluke is actually protecting the liver. You know, imagine you have parasite on your liver and it's sucking out stuff. So kind of like a natural detox. I don't know. It's, it's, it's possible. It's possible. It's kind of a natural detox, but um, who knows? Giardia lambia. I guess the most common one that uh, hits the news headlines a lot. You know, you see Giardia outbreaks all the time. It can be in vegetables, but also uh, known to be in contaminated water sources, especially public pools. Uh, this will colonize the small intestine and at a case rate of 9.1 per 100,000, you know, 9.1 per 100,000 doesn't seem, you know, it's less, way less than 1%. So that's still the most common parasitic infection that I'm aware of, usually treated with antibiotics. So, I mean, by now you guys can see like a lot of these that we've gone over, you know, it's not the typical big bad worm swimming around in your stomach. These are like much smaller organisms that don't have those properties necessarily. And then we have trichinella, trichinosis. I guess a lot of carnivore dieters might know about this but there's been no reported outbreaks since 2016. Uh, sometimes people warn you like not to eat raw pork because of this, but it's more relevant to wild meat, specifically bear meat, uh, sometimes boar meat, not really found in pigs and pork anymore. And you get this from eating like the cysts that were in the bear meat. So the worms will grow in the small intestine and then migrate to the, the muscle tissue, which can kind of cause spasms and cysts. Uh, there was like a Joe Rogan podcast with Steve Ranella, who's a hunter, and he got trichinosis from eating like undercooked bear meat. So, I mean, it's, it's not really relevant, guys. A lot of this stuff is not relevant uh, for the most part, unless you're doing kind of like crazy stuff, like eating large amounts of food and unsanitary conditions or large amounts of improperly prepared raw fish or you know, you're a crazy hunter eating bear tartare. So to me, um, you know, the parasite conversation shouldn't really be had. It's, it's most likely another digestive issue. So thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully you've learned a little bit and uh, I'm just going to relay back to the candida, the SIBO, the fungal infections. We've done a lot of protocols on how to heal your gut. So, uh, you know, there's no need to do these extreme cleanses or extreme antimicrobials. You want to figure out what your diet is, what's wrong, what you need to do. And that's usually a matter of following a pretty strict, balanced, organic diet, incorporating high quality probiotics, specifically water kefir, maybe taking certain supplements and possibly like a light antimicrobial like mastic gum. Uh, so if you guys do want to support me, you can check out frank-stefano.com. Outside of that, as always, guys, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you soon. I finally dug through my, uh, my boxes and got my iron out, and I'm looking somewhat presentable.